what if I told you that I could predict your future? You probably were wondering if you were on the right channel, but it's true. It's true. It's uh, physics. Physics allows us to predict the future. If you look at a thing, a system, uh, just stuff, particles, whatever, and you know their state, you know exactly where they are, how fast they're going, what their momenta are, just in their spins, the angular momenta, every, if you know everything about them, and that everything is given a word called state, then if you also know, say, the laws of physics, and if you don't know the laws of physics, I don't know why you're doing physics, but if you know the laws of physics and you know the state, the laws of physics allow you to predict what that state will be in the future. That is like the entire point of physics. And it allows you to predict the future. It allows you to tell you, it tells you how this system of particles will move into the future. So technically, all of you made of all your little bits and pieces and parts and particles, if I knew exactly what all of you made of, what everything you're made of, if I knew exactly what you, your parts were doing right now, I could apply the laws of physics and I could tell you what you're doing in the future. Now, you might have some worries about free will, but that's, that's another channel. That's not for me to worry about. And you might also worry about quantum mechanics because quantum mechanics is all about fuzziness and probabilities and you can't really know stuff for sure. It, this idea of what we call determinism, it also applies to quantum mechanics, but in a different way. You can't say like, okay, because you can't know in quantum mechanics exactly where a particle is right now. You can never quite know that. But you can have a probability of where you might find the particle the next time you look. And your laws of physics don't tell you how to move that particle from one place to another. It tells you how to move that probability from one place to another. Like, okay, you might find the particle here then the laws of physics tell you that at some time later, blah, 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 you might find the particle in this cloud over here. So the con the fundamental concept of determinism still applies in quantum mechanics, just it applies to different things than, than positions and velocities. And this is the cornerstone, this idea of determinism, of moving states from past to future, is the cornerstone of, of information when it comes to both quantum mechanics and classical mechanics. Is this is how we define information of all this stuff and how it will evolve is the information content of a system. That's it. And what we found, because the laws of physics are the laws of physics, if you have a bunch of particles doing their stuff and you apply the laws of physics and they go on to do other things, the information is preserved. Everything about the particles that you had knew over here, you still know over here. Why? Because you had all, you listed all the stuff and then you just applied the laws of physics to get them over here. Well, you still know all the same stuff. The information hasn't changed. The fundamental information in the system of particles hasn't changed. And this applies even to very, very radical scenarios. Like if I burn a book, the information contained in the book is still there in the ashes. It's just extremely hard to extract, but it's still there. It's not it's not lost. It's just incredibly scrambled. And that's a major, major difference. When you burn a book, information is scrambled and hard to retrieve, but it is not destroyed. Information is preserved. And all this is great and fine and dandy until we get to black holes. Black holes present something of a challenge to this concept that information is conserved or preserved across the universe for all time. Because if you start chucking stuff into a black hole... At first, I should take a step back. If you're just talking about black holes and all you have is general relativity, then who cares? Either the information sinks below the event horizon 
in which case it's just gone. It's, it's locked away. It's not gone. It's just not destroyed. It's just inaccessible. Or it gets stuck to the surface. It gets stuck to the event horizon. Uh, and it's still not gone. It's not destroyed. It's just you can't get to it. Either way, information is preserved. Where the, the tricky part c- that comes in is with Hawking radiation. Hawking radiation tells us that black holes do emit radiation. They emit particles, they emit light waves, everything, and they eventually go away. Black holes evaporate. But the thing about Hawking radiation is that it's thermal radiation. There's no information content in that radiation. It's totally random. It's totally random uh, particles and radiation being emitted. Totally random. There's no information there. Or at least it's a very, very different kind of information. The kind of information that's emitted in Hawking radiation depends on things like the black hole mass, its charge, its spin, and that's it. That's all you can tell about a black hole. From the radiation it emits, all you can tell about the black hole is its mass, its charge, and its spin. So if this radiation emits from the black hole, if Hawking radiation is correct, and the black hole eventually goes away, it loses energy, loses mass, and disappears, what happened to the information we put in? Where'd it go? Seriously, where did it go? If information is preserved across the universe and information gets locked somehow inside of a black hole, but then the black hole emits totally random information that does not care about what you put in there, and then eventually the black hole went away, you have to deal with this fact. You have to deal with the fact that somehow information was lost. An example is this, is if I were to throw myself into a black hole and you into a black hole, I have a different set of information than you do. But once we're swallowed by the black hole, our identities get erased, you know, that information gets locked away and your black hole emits the exact same, you know, say our black holes are the same masses and then we both jump into these two black holes. Your black hole emits Hawking radiation that looks identical to my black hole, if their masses and charges and spins are exactly the same, then what happened to our information? How can you tell those two black holes apart? They lost that information. That is a big paradox. So either information is not preserved across the universe, which challenges some fundamental rules of quantum mechanics and all of physics, or Hawking radiation isn't quite complete. And for the, I'm going to explore some of these ideas more in my next video. So tune in next week, or if it's far in the future, then just go to the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to learn how you can keep this show going. Keep that information preserved.